Sophia orthodoxy in establishment circles may ultimately lie not just primarily, not just or primarily in the corruption of academic freedom and the protocols of proper scientific inquiry, rather it may lie in the distortions in funding treatments for all kinds of illnesses that do not fall under the, under the umbrella of HIV AIDS. Diarrhea kills an estimated 1.5 million children under five every year worldwide, at least half in Africa, is treatable with zinc tablets that cost little more than $2 each, and yet diarrhea received just 5% of worldwide research and, and treatment funding last year. Funding from Western sources, particularly from the United States, has clearly and massively been influenced by the central prominence of the HIV orthodoxy at the expense of funding at the expense of funding efforts for other illnesses. Uganda's health budget, I believe this was for last year, for example, of $112 million is dwarfed by donor spending earmarked for AIDS of $167 million. We also know that in the United States, because of the politics of AIDS, HIV-related research gets proportionally much greater funding than such killers as heart disease and cancer. Let me finally say that the fights you have fought and should continue to fight were a harbinger of what America has become. A closing down, even a despising of the rational mind, a casting aside of the pursuit of truth and understanding, and the replacement with the almost willful pursuit of ignorance, so long as that comports with and feeds distressed emotional needs as well as political and economic interests. In other words, the repressing of open discourse about HIV AIDS was but one example of a, deep, of a society in deep betrayal of the vision of its founders, that a democratic society needs rational, open, honest debate if it is to thrive. There is an effect, as the literary critic Lionel Trillian put it, a moral obligation to be intelligent, not blinkered, biased, close-minded. So it is vital, desperately important, to fight the forces of unreason, of self-serving special interest, of ignorance. I tried to do my bit in the past few years, and in the face of furious opposition, including efforts to have me fired, my green card removed, threatening letters, emails, phone calls, by arguing that Jean-Marie Ramsey was not killed by her parents, and that the evidence the evidence, E-V-I-D-E-N-C-E, -E -E, pointed to an intruder. I did so not because her death was singularly important, it was tragic, not singularly important, but because of the belief uh, that if the media and the law can lie about the death of a child, what can you not lie about? And as Vaclav Havel said, has said, telling one lie will not protect us from another. So demanding that you be heard, that you not be silenced, that your work not be rejected because it is too controversial, that your research be judged on its merits, not by scientific ideologues, that you be allowed in the public square, is surely vitally important if we are to begin to re really understand this thing called aid. But it's important, I believe, in a larger sense, in that it will be part of the process of a getting back to the foundational idea that open, rational discourse is the very essence of what this society is supposed to be about. It was not meant to be one that is closed-minded, that punishes a dissenting idea, that denigrates someone simply because they utter thoughts that are uncomfortable or out of the mainstream. That was not the idea that when as a boy in England I fell in love with the idea of America. I remember when I was about 13 or 14, standing in a small bookstore in Oldham where I was born, pulling from the shelf Theodore White's Making of the President 1960 and reading its famous first words, it was invisible as always. The it was the unfolding majesty of the democratic project on election night. The book was a wonderfully romantic, idealized view of the political process, but it was wonderful. The idea of an America that was fair and just and open and welcoming an America that was honest and curious, an America that that young boy could dream about. I want my dream back. I want America to be what it was supposed to be, not what it has become. Do not give up your fight. Never let them win. 
Keep demanding that you be allowed in the public square. Make your work public and accessible to the layperson. Nag and jostle, rep jostle reporters and producers. Demand that, be, that you be heard, not only for your sake, but for all our sakes. So again, welcome and good luck. Thank you very much, right. Michael. That was uh, wonderfully thought-provoking and also funny. And I, I think in an, in an area of discourse that is sometimes so dark, you have to develop a little black humor. If you don't enjoy black humor, uh, the door is over there. <laughs> <laughs>